The Endorphins Further Generator is a very flexible complex oscillator, and that extends to the way it implements frequency modulation. It has both linear and exponential frequency modulation controls on the front panel. The exponential frequency modulation has an attenuverter, and this is good for connecting, say, external LFOs to do vibrato effects, and also a normal attenuator on the linear input. This is one way you can bring in an external oscillator to frequency modulate the endorphins. There's also some interesting normaling going on, where the final output from the carrier oscillator comes back around to the linear FM input on the modulation oscillator, or the so-called mood oscillator in endorphin speak. The endorphins comes from the factory as a dual analog triangle core VCO without through zero FM. There's a jumper on the back to decide whether or not you're using linear or exponential FM for the modulation or so-called mood bus. However, there is an optional strong zero core oscillator that plugs right in in place of either one of the existing VCOs. It's just a simple chip on a series of pins, very easy to install. This is actually a digital VCO, 12-bit, around a 60K sample rate, and it does implement through zero FM. So let's look at all three types of FM, exponential, linear, and linear through zero. The blue cable is the output of my modulation or mood oscillator, and that's the blue waveform over in the data. The green cable is the final output from my carrier oscillator. You notice that there's direct outputs for these waveforms as well. And for those who don't know, I've been using the black cable as the sync cable for the oscilloscope function on the data. It tells it which waveform to follow. Since we're gonna be modulating the carrier oscillator, I'm syncing off of the modulation oscillator since it's gonna be more stable in general. Now, when we have all three wave shaping controls set to full counterclockwise, the final output of the carrier is more or less a sine wave. You'll see it has a few additional harmonics, and those are present even if I'm not going through the Moog Mode 32 and just plug it straight into the output. So factor that in when you're looking at some of the FM spectras. There's some extra harmonics because the sine wave is not pure, and that's true of virtually all analog oscillators. It's hard to form a pure sine wave. We're gonna start off with a sine wave modulating the sine wave output from our carrier. I can choose what waveform with the mood wave button here over on the modulation side. I'm gonna put the Moog into drone mode so that we're always hearing its output. And then as we turn on frequency modulation on the modulation or mood bus, we get a slight pitch shift in the carrier. So there must be a little bit of DC offset inside the modulation bus. That's okay. I'll just go ahead and tune the carrier down so it's no longer moving in relationship to the modulation. I can also listen to both since I have them both at a mixer. A little bit out of pitch there. There they are. Now they're in nice unison. And you see that the two waveforms track together pretty well over a range of octaves. There is a trimmer inside the further generator to do this. I've also been doing a little bit of trimming using the AGHV scale, which is just an essential part of my own system. Okay, let's start increasing the mood index of the sine wave modulating the final output here. I have the jumper set in the back right now for exponential FM. As I increase the mood index, we don't hear a lot for the first half of the control, but the second half, it really starts to kick in. Now a side effect of exponential FM is whenever you increase the modulation index, the pitch of the carrier tends to shift upward. That's because exponential says, go up one octave per volt, go down one octave per volt. Well, going up an octave is doubling the frequency, going down is only halving the frequency, and as a result, the average pitch shifts upward. So you often need to retune the carrier after setting a modulation index. Something I've noticed with the endorphins, at least this particular model, is you will get a little bit of oscillator entrainment where the two will lock together when close. That helps with your FM tuning. They also recommend using the sync quite a bit to make sure the carrier is locked into the modulator. That'll stop any drifting and unwanted beating, and we'll play around with sync a lot more later on. Once you have tuned your oscillators using exponential FM, you can usually transpose across a nice range of pitches. A little bit sharp there. And if I'm having trouble, I can go ahead and trim either the oscillator itself or my V scale. As we reduce the modulation index, you'll hear the pitch shift and I'll need to retune to get rid of that little pitch shift because we have an offset 
whenever we introduce exponential FM. Now, the different modulation waveforms introduce different types of distortions in the carrier waveform, and therefore different sounds. I'll switch over to the sawtooth output. Let's change my mood wave to that. Increase my modulation. There's a retuning here. And you can see how when the sawtooth is high, it's speeding up the sine wave output. When sawtooth is low, it's slowing it down to the point where it actually stalls the waveform. And that's the side effect of not being a through zero FM oscillator. It can't go below zero hertz, so it's going to stall when it has to go down that low. I'm going to trade some cables here and quickly look at the square wave modulation, which is also very obvious. Do a little retuning. And you really see how the carrier is sped up when the square wave is high and slowed down when the square wave is low. And then we're out of tune again. Get back into tune. There we go. If I'm unsure of the tuning, I can listen to them both and go, that's not right, let's go down to here. Of course, we can use different tuning intervals for different modulation amounts. Now, there is one more modulation choice for the endorphins, and that is noise. And I'll click around to that and increase. This random modulation really disturbs the carrier. There's no real central pitch anymore. But the cool thing is, is if you put the modulation oscillator, or the mood oscillator, down into low range, you hear this really a sample and hold. And that's controlled by the frequency of this modulation oscillator. You can also route a different waveform into this red star input. And let's pull some cables out of the way so you can see it. So you can bring in an external signal, such as another VCO, or you can even do some internal patching, such as taking the carrier's waveform output, putting it back into this external input, which will then modulate the carrier. I'll turn down the modulation depth, put this up to high frequency so I don't forget it later, grab the sine wave, feed it into that external input, increase the modulation, and now we'll have a feedback loop. So that's a way of getting a different waveform or sound out of the further generator. Now the downside of this pitch shift that you keep hearing whenever I increase the modulation or mood index, switch these around, actually I'll go back to the sine wave. Whenever we modulate the depth of the mood index using say an envelope generator or an LFO, that pitch is going to go off. And that quite often is a problem. Let me go ahead and grab another envelope, which is sharing the same trigger here. Bring it over to the modulation index amount, increase the amount, and start triggering this. You can hear that pitch shift, really pronounced on slow envelopes. I can slow this down even further. If it's a little bit faster, that can be kind of a cool sound, but it's most useful for percussion. So I'm going to turn off drone. I'm going to change the VCA envelope on the mother to turn off the sustain, so it's only an attack decay envelope. And now you can hear the percussion potential of exponential FM modulation. Let's go to a ruder waveform. Noise modulation makes particularly good drums. Let's go down an octave. Oh yeah, that's not a bad kick drum actually. So exponential FM in short is useful, has some nice deep effects, really good for percussion. However, it does have a pitch shift whenever you change the modulation amount, which might require some oscillator retuning, and it's particularly an issue when you envelope the modulation depth. So let's try this alternative. 
linear FM, but still without through-zero modulation. I've changed the jumper on the back of the further generator to use linear FM instead of exponential FM whenever I'm modulating through the modulation or mood bus, and I've cleaned up the patch a little bit and retuned the oscillators. You do not need to alter your tracking when you change that jumper, for example. Go ahead and bring up both of the uh, waveforms here. You hear they hold up pretty well across the several octave range. However, now that we have linear FM, we can start driving larger modulation depths without going out of tune. I'll go ahead and go back into drone mode on the Mother 32. Turn down the modulation or mood oscillator so you can't hear it. Play around with my tuning here so there's no drift initially. And start increasing the modulation index. You see I already have its switch turned on for frequency modulation on the mood bus. So even though I've turned up the modulation index and the harmonic content has changed, we're still in tune. We haven't shifted yet. That's because with linear FM, instead of shifting up and down the same number of octaves, we're shifting up and down the same number of hertz. And the result is it averages the same shift up as it does down, and the pitch stays the same. Cool. However, look at that flat spot at the bottom of the waveform of our final output from the carrier oscillator, the green wave. It's almost flat. That means that the sine wave coming out has been slowed down so much that it's almost at zero hertz. And when you have an oscillator that does not implement through zero FM, which is the issue with the stock endorphins further generator, you can't go any lower than zero hertz. And if you ask it to, it's gonna just stall there. So you're gonna shift up higher than you can possibly shift down. So as we increase the mood index, you hear that we've gone out of tune. That's because we've hit that limit of we can't shift down anymore, even though we're still shifting up. And you can still pick a sound that you like and retune the carrier oscillator. And still play it. Now another way around this issue is to tune the carrier to a much higher pitch so that you have more range to shift it down. So let's go ahead and take this up to a high pitch initially. I'm going to take my modulation index out, listen to my modulation oscillator for reference. Octave and a fifth. Couple octaves. Take the modulation out. Start increasing the modulation index. You can push a little bit deeper before it goes crazy. You can also just simply play higher pitches. So the way around this is either to start with an even higher initial pitch of the carrier, and I do like a little bit of split of tuning in between the modulation and carrier oscillators, or envelope it very briefly. And this is another thing that I like to do. So let's go ahead and take the modulation index back down to a basic sound that I like. Tracks the keyboard, that's nice. Bring in some envelope. And just go to a short punch. Maybe cut down on my initial amount. There, yeah, that's fairly tonal. Much better behave than exponential FM as well out of drone mode, go ahead and go into attack decay mode. Can also work for percussion, particularly if I change the modulation around to that noise. Maybe go even further and down in pitch. Or use other modulation sources, such as the square waves, particularly raucous. Go back to the sine wave. Higher depth. Play around to get odd percussion sounds if you like. However, in general, the reason you might want to use linear FM is for the more tonal playing. I'll put sustain on. That sort of little FM blip at the start mixes very well with other waveforms. Let's go ahead and bring up the square wave on the Moog. I don't even know if it's in tune anymore. Bring in some 
filter enveloping. Modulation on the Moog. That's a sound very hard to get out of a non frequency modulated oscillator, but it's a nice layered sound. Anyway, turn these back to their extremes. Well, that was a lot of fun, but even better is if you can get a linear FM oscillator that can also go through zero so the oscillator starts playing backwards, giving you a negative frequency, and now you still average out the same tone. And you can go to even higher depths of your mood index. So I'm going to do a little crossfade here while I install the Strong Zero Core for the endorphins. I've installed the Strong Zero Oscillator Core for my carrier oscillator. You can put it as the modulator as well, but it won't get you as much. Actually, you'll lose the low range if you do that. So I put it over in the carrier side. This is the analog VCO that came out. It's considerably smaller. And you see where even a pin missing with a hole filled in on the socket on the further generator, just to make sure you don't put it in backwards or shift it off by a pin. So it's a very easy installation. I've tuned up the oscillators to middle C. Let's listen to them both. One thing you will deal with when you change the core is that the tracking will go off a little bit across the keyboard for the carrier. Again, there's a trimmer in the back. Or in my case, I like to use the AGHV scale so I can trim it from the front panel without having to take apart my modular. Let me go ahead and put this in drone mode. Go up an octave. I see it's slightly sharp there. So let me go ahead and put my trim control here. And you see how fine of an adjustment this is. Let's stabilize that. There's middle C. There's C a bit below. Let's go up an octave. That's pretty good tracking across several octaves. I'll take that. I love this module, by the way. Okay, why do we want a through zero core when we're doing linear FM? To get a much wider range out of the mood index. An interesting side effect is using the digital oscillator that endorphin sells. You get a different range of sounds. It's a bit grungier, a bit noisier. And personally, I like it. Let's go ahead and put drone mode again. Turn off the modulation oscillator. We have all the same waveforms as before. And start increasing that mood index. Here's the shift. Notice how far I'm going with the control. And we're maintaining pitch. Now you can see at the top of that waveform where the low part of the modulator sine wave, the blue, is starting to reverse the playback of the carrier oscillator. But this digital oscillator is not entirely stable at these settings. So you will get a bit of a grunge factor in here. It's not perfect. Some of you may not like that sound. I found that I do. And go ahead and play different octaves. You hear that noise component in there. And we'll get that with different waveforms. I'll go over to the sawtooth for my mood wave. Try the square wave. interesting range of sounds. And again, we can go ahead and tune these to different intervals. Notice I did not have to turn the carrier way up, play higher octaves, it stays in tune. I take this down, go back to my sine wave, make sure you can actually see the sine wave, then plug in our envelope to the modulation depth. And go to really long envelopes. Maintain pitch. It makes it a much more tonal thing to play. Add a little filter cutoff if I want to get rid of some of that grunge. Maybe speed up the filter envelope. Mix back in the Moog. Love those layered sounds. That's getting rich. FM is really powerful in the bass range. I'll take the Moog out of there. That's just the FM. Go fast.
faster envelope, perhaps. Lower the sustain level, which is how much FM depth we're using while we're holding a note. Maybe have a deeper modulation while we're holding the note. And notice I haven't had to do any retuning. It's staying in, so that's why I love through zero FM. But let's go ahead and explore some wider ranges of tuning of the carrier versus the modulator. For example, I like to take the carrier higher than the modulator. Get a nice undertone in there. I'll go ahead and turn off the drone mode. I have sustain on, a little longer decay. Higher pitch, perhaps. Let's go ahead and turn the further generator's carrier down and play with higher modulation frequency in relation to the carrier. nice sound as well. Ooh. A little too low there. Hear a little bit of the aliasing at the very top, the digital artifact. Let's go ahead and go even lower. Nice bass. Tune the mode down an octave. So that's a comparison between exponential FM, linear FM without through zero, and through zero linear FM, which gives you the widest range of modulation indexes while maintaining tracking a pitch across your keyboard. I'm happy to finally have an oscillator where I can show you all three and I have all three as a choice when I'm playing. Me personally, I'm keeping the strong zero core in my endorphins. It's what's going to be in this module for the other movies in this set. And it's what I've had the most fun playing with just because it gives me a wider range of potential sounds. 